Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be covering statics and we're going to look at equilibrium of rigid bodies and we're going to be finding some reactions here and this will be our 22nd part in this particular series. So what we have going on is we have this garage door as shown from a side profile here and a very long winded description that states that a 160 pound overhead garage door consists of a uniform rectangular panel AC, which is 84 inches long, supported by a cable AE attached at the middle upper edge of the door by two sets of frictionless rollers at A and at B. Each set consists of two rollers located on each side of the door. The rollers A are free to move in the horizontal channels and while B Rollers at B are guided by the vertical channels. If the door is held in the position for which B to D is 42 inches, we need to determine the tension in the cable and the reactions of the rollers. So what we have going on from our description here is that we have to determine this tension force in E A here, this cable from E to A, such when the distance from D to B is 42 inches. And we have a couple of rollers here. Well, we're going to have a set of rollers here at A that allows for horizontal movement. So it'll be resisting vertical forces. And here at B, we have a roller that allows for vertical movement, but resist horizontal forces. So it looks something like that. And of course, we have the weight here, 160 pounds of the door. So we have to find T. We have to find our reactions here at A and at B. And we're going to have to consider the reactions at A and B, given that there are two ro roller locations or two rollers at each spot. So what I'm showing now is just one entire roller. So whatever we get for the reaction shown here, we would divide that by two for each of those. So let's go ahead and let's throw on some unknowns here. So I'm going to assume my total reactions up here at A is going upward and my total reactions here at B are going to the right. And once again, if you assume the wrong directions of those, you would just get negative values as your answer. So no big deal in assuming the wrong direction. So we have to find our tension and our reactions. So let's get going here. So since we are going to be in equilibrium here, we have the possibility of using our three equilibrium equations for our 2D problem, which is summing forces in the vertical, summing uh, forces in the horizontal, and then summing moments about a point. And all of those have to be equal to zero for equilibrium to be true. So there is an easy one right away that we can get if we sum forces in the vertical direction equal to zero we will have our 160 pounds going downward. And then our only other reaction or only other force here in the vertical direction is RA, and we have it assumed upward. So we would have our minus 160 pounds, which is going downward, plus R sub A equal to zero. So our total reaction at A would be 160 pounds in that upward direction. Now that is not the reaction at the roller, because remember, this is just a simplistic view showing two rollers in one. Alrighty, so how do we get our tension force and then our reaction here at B? Because if we sum forces in the horizontal, well, they're both showing up in the horizontal, can't really get anything done. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to use our moment equation and sum moments about one of these points. And what we're going to do is that we are going to sum down here at B and that's gonna give us T. So a few things that we have to determine are our distances from our points to our, or from our forces where they're acting to the point which we're summing about, which is B. So if we look at our tension force, we have a horizontal tension force. So we need a vertical distance for a perpendicular. And we have 42 inches given by the problem. All right. And then for our A, we need this distance. And then for the 160 pounds, we need that distance right there. All right. So how do we do this? Well, we have the overall height from A to B, and we have the angled dimension here. So what we can do is we can use our triangle like such. Let me redraw this real quick. So this is the horizontal distance from A to B. This would be our vertical distance from A to B, which is given as 42 inches. And then 42 inches plus this 28 inches gives us the diagonal dimension, which <clears throat> would be 70 inches. So the total distance, since this is going to form a right triangle, since we are looking at x and y coordinates here, so our total horizontal distance from A to B would just be the square root of 70 squared subtracting off 42 squared, 
and that gives us a total of 56 inches there from A to B. Alrighty, now we have to determine the distance from G to B. And what we can do is we can utilize the same uh, triangle here because it is the same slope. We are just shortening our height here and shortening our length there. So what we can do is that we can ratio this out using our previous triangle. Because now we know that horizontal distance from G to B is 28 inches. So all we really need is this dimension down here, which we can just ratio that. So we would have 28 inches times 56 inches divided by 70 inches. And that's just ratioing um, the previous triangle here <clears throat> to our uh, new triangle that we have going on here, just cross multiplying and solving for H. And we end up with 22.4 inches there. Okay, so now that we have our dimensions for our forces, we can actually now just sum moments about point B equal to zero. And what we have going on here is I would have my T force. I'm taking counterclockwise as positive. This thing would be rotating counterclockwise about point B. So it's positive times its perpendicular distance of 42 inches. <clears throat> and then subtracting off 160 pounds times 56 inches, which is my reaction at point A. It is going upward, so it'll be rotating clockwise about B. Perpendicular distance of 56 inches. The next 160 will be rotating counterclockwise, so it will be positive 160 pounds times its perpendicular distance, which is 22.4 equal to zero. So we can rearrange and we can solve for our tension in our cable, and it gives us a total of 128 pounds in that leftward direction. And there's one of my answers. Alrighty, so to get my reaction here at B, all I have to do is sum forces in the horizontal direction because T and B are the only ones there. So that is really quick. So if we sum forces in the horizontal direction, take to the right as positive, I would have minus 128 pounds for my tension plus my RB assumed to the right equal to zero. Well, RB is just going to be 128 pounds, 128 pounds to the right. Everything just got really thick there. Alrighty. <clears throat> So we have found the tension in the cable. Now we just have to determine part B, which is the reactions for each of our rollers. Remember, this is just showing um, a simplistic model. We really have two rollers here, one on each side in and out of the page here where the door actually connects in. So because we are consisting of two rollers at each location, to determine the actual roller amount at A and B, we would just take our values and divide them by two. So we have 160 pounds, so divide that by two, and we have 180 pounds in that upward direction as a reaction at A. And then for B, we have 128 pounds to the right, so divide that by two, and we have 64 pounds acting to the right. And there's my answers for this problem, and that's how you would solve this particular problem. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.